It is a pleasure to participate in this timely and relevant International Forum on Democracy, the Shared Human Values, especially because I have had a long and productive working relationship with two of the organizers, the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences and China Media Group, and also with China Foreign Language Publishing Group. Other than global economic and social imbalances and climate change, democracy and human rights are the most important challenges for the international community. If our group can articulate the shared human values of democracy and can array the diversified international approaches in this forum and in future forums, we will have made a vital contribution to China's role in the world and to the well-being of the entire world. I look forward to contributing. My short presentation today focuses on what China calls its whole process people's democracy, a mysterious phrase to Westerners who assume that China's political system, which has neither multiple parties nor general elections, can be in no way democratic. Yet, when President Xi Jinping explains China's great rejuvenation, China's second centenary goal of becoming a fully modernized socialist nation by the 100th anniversary of the People's Republic of China in 2049, he uses six aspirational adjectives, the third of which is democratic. President Xi calls democracy a shared value of humanity and a key tenet upheld by the party and the Chinese people to be used, he says, to solve the problems that the people want to solve. The party's call is to expand the orderly political participation of the people, to strengthen the protection of human rights and the rule of law, and to ensure that the people enjoy extensive rights and freedoms in accordance with the law. Democracy in the party-led system involves absorbing public opinion via feedback mechanisms, such as polling to discern what people think, for example, about proposed new policies, a process that the party calls pooling people's wisdom. Another example is when officials are nominated to new positions, there is a period of time for candid feedback from colleagues and, and subordinates, as well as from superiors. So, even though there are no elections in the Western sense, there is a good deal of engagement with different constituencies. In enhancing whole process people's democracy, President Xi calls for upholding and improving the People's Congress system, stressing properly and effectively exercising their power of overshift. Moreover, the work reports of party leadership at party congresses every five years and of the government at the National People's Congress every year reflect a great deal of input and suggestions from all relevant officials, experts, and constituencies. The documents circulate iteratively many times during the six to eight months or more of the drafting period. I like to stress the increasing role of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference in the development of deliberative and consultative democracy, because even though the CPPCC has no formal power, it has the growing social powers of expertise, influence, and public pressure. For those foreigners who marvel how China contained COVID-19, with so few cases and deaths compared to other countries, I point out that the common root of China winning the war to contain the novel coronavirus and China winning the war to eradicate extreme poverty is the CPC's leadership and organizational capacity. This remarkable parallelism is a probative insight into China's party-led governance system. I have been coming to China for more than 30 years. I have traveled across China, visiting over 100 cities with my long-term partner, Adam Jew, for research and interviews, books and essays, television and documentaries. Yet, as much as I thought I knew China, I did not appreciate all that is required for poverty alleviation 
until I visited poor regions, especially remote mountain villages, and spoke with poor villagers. It was in 2013 that President Xi Jinping first proposed the concept of targeted or precision poverty alleviation. Targeted means standardized procedures and individualized programs to bring each poor family out of poverty. Five levels of local party secretaries coordinate their role. Provincial, municipal, county, township, village. Third party evaluations are conducted regularly and randomly to ensure accuracy and honesty. I was startled to discover that every poor family in China has its own file. Every poor family, that's millions of poor families, each with its own customized plan, each checked monthly and digitized for central compilation and analysis. Equally startling, local officials are dispatched to impoverished villages to manage poverty alleviation for two years or more. After China eliminated all extreme poverty in 2020, relative poverty was still extant, of course, and thus President Xi set a broader, longer-range, multi-decade goal, common prosperity. My friends in China ask, why does the world misunderstand the party? The problem, I argue, is partly semantics, because the English word party connotes in democratic political systems a political party that competes in free and open multi-party elections such that when a ruling party does not compete in free and open multi-party elections that political system is deemed not democratic this portrait mispaints the chinese system which is founded on a different principle where the party is the ruling organization, not a competing political party. It is a dedicated elite from all sectors of society, consisting of less than 7% of the population, but tasked to represent 100% of the population. Thus, the party, as the ruling party, is not the equivalent of a ruling political party in Western systems where political parties represent only a certain group of voters and are time-bound by election cycles. For this reason, the Chinese party, the CPC, has a higher and broader obligation to enhance the living standards and personal well-being of all Chinese citizens. This includes reforms, rule of law, transparency in government, public participation in governance, increasing democracy and various freedoms, including freedoms of expression, and of course, human rights. These are real challenges. All political systems, all political parties have trade-offs. And while achieving national objectives like eradicating uh, poverty, like controlling COVID-19, achieving these national objectives is indeed an advantage of China's party-led system but it is not the only criterion for evaluating systems. This is why continuing reform, opening up, and system improvement are needed. Looking ahead, given that democracy is aspirational as part of China's mid-century goals, what kinds of system improvements need be made? What are the boundaries for improvements? What is the optimum balance between development to achieve common prosperity and freedom of expression? And how will that balance change over time? A final point about President Xi Jinping. Foreigners may be surprised to learn that he has considered poverty alleviation to be his most important task. He made the remarkable statement I have spent more energy on poverty alleviation than on anything else. I know no other national leader who has made such an assertion. For China, poverty alleviation exemplifies human rights. And for the party, to develop democracy in governance is both a mission and a challenge. Thank you. Xie Xie.